Hi folks, I'm Stephen Crony. Now, I'm always going on about painting without fear and don't be afraid to make mistakes. So today, I've just thrashed the brush around as fast as I can and just showed you how you can create a lovely watercolour in just 12 minutes. So let me show you the colours. Just use the three colours on the palette for this one, which were the, the Ultramarine, Raw Sienna and Burnt Umber. And then most of it done with the large on Ransom Hake. And then I've got just a couple of rigger brushes, a three and a zero. Right then. <clears throat> so just start by just giving it a light watering just to stop it from going on crinkly. Then I'm just going to mix a bit of raw sienna, ultramarine, such a little burnt umber. That's going to be something like that. And then a stronger mix to put in the distant hill. Same colours but less pines. More sorry, more pines and less water. And this time I'm giving something up there and bring it down. Something like that. And then an even stronger mix. So I'm gonna put in some trees and bushes and things. Just mix them all together. Especially when I'm going to put the cabins and houses. Something like that. Maybe even a touch of rigor work in there as well. Just wet the brush. Brown and blue. I'm just going to pop in some random line just to get in there. None of this will just fade off because the paper's quite wet. Just give a nice sort of misty look to it. It's dried a little bit, so I'm going to go back in there and it'll go a little bit that's going to be on stronger look. Like. that line there. Sometimes you know, if you want to get random you just sort of come down at it from a from a height just to try and get sort of more random sort of marks. <clears throat> then take a bit of card, pop in a roof, and get like an instant cabin. A few more random details, I don't know what they are. But let's have another one just there next to it. A few posts. Um, I have another one there. You can go telegraph poles, a few wires that way. Probably overdoing the cabins there just a little bit. Let's have another one there. Trying to get random effects, which we also get, we just use a rigger brush. Just a few things going on here and there. So I switch to the sword sword brush, sword liner, I'm going to pop in a big tree now on the left. So we're going to go some, from something like that, I mean just a whole load of branches and things. You can see I'm just trying to do it nice and loose. Bring it down a little bit long further. So just, I should have done the distant ones first, but never mind. Behind it, 
Oh nice, we'll work out some sort of path. So we've got a sort of path that's going something somewhere along there. Comes over there like that. A few more fence posts. I need to be a bit bigger this time, that's why I'm going to go with the sword liner brush this time. So let's just pop them in. I can't get in the same sort of effect, am I? Flat against the paper. <clears throat> I'm starting to think about shadows now. But before, let's give that a quick dry. slightly Let's go right the way down to the bottom just so it was darker than that in the background that's all I was after whoops There's a few hints of raw center in there. Right, and then shadows. I need to dry it first, so close your ears. Clean the brush, take our fair whack of the water, not all of it though. <coughs> I'm just going brown, base, just mixing the same three colours together. But I want a little bit more blue than anything, looking for a sort of bluey grey colour. Right, so the sun's coming from down there, so it's coming straight across there, up there. And I'm going to use the rig out to do the, the, um, the shadows off these. too close I'm sort of thinking just over there somewhere so 
all you have to do is just take off some of that paint so that it stands out. So I'm just thinking just, just there somewhere. So I'm going to remove the paint, dry it. Make sure it's bone dry, it needs to be bone dry. And I'm just going to take the little, little rigger brush, this is a size zero. Load it up, lots of paint, lots of water. dog in front of him yeah, just a little focal point near to the scene um, there's always room for some little birds and then all that's left to do is pop my name in the corner So let's stick a mount on that now. See what it looks like. So here's our paints in the mount. So if we go have a closer look at it. So starting with the background. So first it was pop the sky in all the way down to there, which is just above the halfway line. Then it was another layer across there. That was to put the hill in as well. And then put, and then another layer across there to put the trees. So by the time we get down to the trees, you've got three layers and you see how it's going on darker and darker as the paper's drying as well, which means you can scrape out these buildings and get nice, clean, sharp roofs, telegraph poles, scrape out anything you want. Just lots of random marks. It looks as if you've spent hours and hours painstakingly creating all these marks, but just take seconds. Don't worry about it, just bash in. The quicker you do it, the better. What I, I love putting in fence posts, just it, it just adds like a man-made element to the scene, but it also gives you things to, to cast shadows off and it helps accentuate the light. So we've got like this big band in the foreground, strong shadow coming across, plus these marks, these shadows cast from each post and the big tree as well there. And it just gives that sense of light. Sort of sun's over here somewhere over on the left hand side casting its rays over the, over the scene. Got the big tree, put in, in two washes. First wash, it was the same as that, so I wanted it stronger, so it differentiated and bring it into the foreground. So I did another wash. You have to dry it and then do it over. Create a separate layer, build it up in layers. Same with these marks here in the foreground. Just I just come down with the brush, just, to get as, just trying to get as much random sort of effect as I possibly can leaving lots of unpainted paper to suggest all the snow and all the snow in between all these marks as well and then I always like to stick our little man and dog in there just adds a bit of life to the scene so I hope you enjoy that thanks as always to my patrons um, I'll also post lots of photographs of this painting lots of close-ups as well over my, my Patreon page patreon.com slash Stephen Crane so join me over there um, to see lots of photographs and lots of other videos as well. So until next time, thanks for watching. I hope you see you on Patreon page and I'll see you again soon.